because that's our signal. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for the part that is a serious segment. We call it the good news, the bad news, and the other shit. That's right. I know you like it. The good news, the bad news. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Uh. Well, I told you guys. Oh, that's all, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's Tuesday, so let me go to my appropriate visual aids. Yes, sir. Oh, there they are. Okay, oh, I got boy. it. I got it built in. All right, well, nice first. Picture. Nice picture, huh? We're not going to deal with that one first, though. Oh. We got to talk about what's going on over in Libya. Now, some of y'all, I know, it's hard, but yeah, Libya, Tripoli, you know, on the shores of Tripoli, right? that kind of a thing. Okay. It's going on over there, and there's been a major confrontation, a civil war, as it were, uh, but there's a whole lot of political controversy, which I can't get into the, today. But there's, there's a whole thing about Libya. Needless to say, uh, they're throwing out what they're calling a dictator. Now, it's so interesting, all these quote-unquote dictators, as much as the U.S. people are talking about him, he's been on our budget. <laughs> $669 in 2010, you guys. People like Gaddafi are often under our control, you know, and many of us feel like we just spanked them when they act up. Right. Things have been quiet over there in Libya because he basically had been doing what the U.S. wanted. Actually targeting supposed members of al-Qaeda, Vic, right. and routing them, arresting them the whole bit. He certainly has been accused of, of, col of collaborating or doing things for the U.S. government. There's this whole love-hate relationship, but what happens when you have these dirty deals with people like Gaddafi, like was, uh, like uh, Saddam, yes. uh, like General Noriega in yes. Panama. We yes. have a whole history. Right. The Shah, uh, Marcos in the Philippines. Right. We have a whole long history of dictators that we help keep in power with our Mission Impossible forces and all our stuff and our military might. And so uh, there's now over there, it's been a revolution. The U.S. is very tepid about actually coming out because from what I was reading, the st studies say that the rebel group contains a bunch of folks hostile to the U.S. Right. And the U.S. was sort of reluctant to help the rebels overthrow Gaddafi if it meant putting people in power. They were right. actually more anti-U.S. than Gaddafi is. Right. That's right. <laughs> that was the thing, by the way, with Saddam Hussein, for those of you who followed it back in the days. All the intelligence stuff that was even leaking out said that all the people waking to take charge behind Saddam right. were worse. Right, right. In other words, you can you you're so busy trying to overthrow that you don't know who you who's going to, to replace who you're overthrowing. And, and let me ask you this, and I'm gonna go back a little bit. And I, I really just it's just a question. I have no facts or no factoids. So let me ask you this: Lockerbie, Scotland, the plane shot down. Libya, in some kind of way, uh, implicated. Right, and, and implicated to pay. Even though there's a bunch of controversy, versus, even on that. Right now, remember Libya. Either who do you think, or what was the impetus to say? When someone pays, their apps, they're some way are being leveraged. Well, we, yes, we are responsible indirectly or directly. You know, so who was behind the push to get them paid? Was the, that all Libya's decision to do that? That's now? part of the problem, Vic. This is a country that, and this is a person, so surrounded with conspiracy theory and controversy that it, from those who think that anything he does is orchestrated from the U.S. government, that he's like our bad guy. Right. And now people theorize that, you know, it's the old Ajahn provocateur. They, you know, supposedly, and this is some of the stories that Hitler, before he invaded Poland, assembled a group of Jews, dressed them up like soldiers, right. and then attacked them and, and nah. invaded Poland. Yeah. The Ajahn provocateur, that you provide a provoking agent. Right. That then, like, they say that the U.S. will go into a country help someone get elected who will lead to instability right. that causes the U.S. to come in. It's a word they call covert. That's right. Yeah. So people say that that's what Gaddafi is. They say he, Saddam, all of them Was are he, our people. Let me just say this. <laughs> could, could we say that, let's just say this, Gaddafi was more or less, hey, we're comfortable with him. He's not trying to do a lot more. He's not doing as, as, as much less as we would like, but he's not doing anything above and beyond where he needs to draw attention from us. Did right. something happen words, from this point on where all of a sudden he got a comfort zone with him? And well, no. The, what happens is the people didn't have a country zone. Well, well see, I'm talking about us. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm no, and when I we, say us, we. Well, yeah. the, the, the rumors were always that the U.S. was quietly supporting, quietly hoping that he would crush the rebellion. Right. 
because you you okay. rather have your I own boy in power. Right. The puppet. So yeah, you want your puppet in power, but you don't want to look like you support the puppet. Right. So you have you to, have to do distance. that on the down low. Right. So what I'm saying is, the whole point is, he says our puppet is doing fine. He's going to be able to have to. He has to demonstrate that he has autonomy in his country, control, right. but at the same time that we're not influencing him, and we're saying it's already been influenced years in the making. Exactly, just like okay. Somalia, where the so-called devil warlord whose sons were attending like USC, whatever. Right. <laughs> they're all over here in college. They're, mm. they're warlords, right. but they fly back and forth. Right. Their family have houses here, <laughs> and they're our enemies. But sure, look like we got some deals. Right. You don't hear shit about Somalia right now, do you? No. Because they're cooperating. Right, right. Once they cooperate, you let them go back to terrorizing mm-hmm. their own people. Right. You don't care about that. And it continues on. As long on. as they're your boy in power. And I'm not here, I'm not a historian when it comes to politics. So please, this is just, I always say you have to have the framework. I have a good position of having an opinion based on the information at hand that I have. And so to me, I'm like many other folks who are just going, well, this is what I see. Let me speculate on what's happening. When somebody stays in power that long, I said, so let me just say this. I know how good countries are to come in and, and, and explode a situation. Afghanistan, Saddam. Why, why has it been that this guy has been able to sit comfortably. So to me, I'm not blaming the U.S. Yeah. I'm just saying oh, that yeah. they got a comfort zone I, I'm, with I'm sort of, I, the U.S. is complicit in most of the stuff that goes on there. It's yeah. one way or the other. Okay. Now when I say that, you say, you mean we're doing it? When I say complicit, they're involved. Right. Indirectly. One way or the other, or whether they're involved right. as provoking the reaction, or people that they are directly on their budget, and they can all get, of that. And they can, can the U.S. get credit for having say, look, this is the best stability we have. The alternative may be far worse. Well, can you give them already, credit for that? They're already, because well, they never came out and say that really clearly, but they're hinting at that now because you got to put the spin on it, right? Right. I'm, see, I'm, I have you to go on both sides look, here. Right. You got to make I'm, this Libyan revolt look like it's good for us. Right. And then, but you, but watch the money. You remember, six hundred sixty-eight billion dollars. I told you. Let's see how much goes here, because then you'll find these same rebels that you supported bringing some of that same money back at you in the form of weaponry. Now, let me ask you this. Then, here's the point. Let's just say you leave all the involvement of U.S. being involved in, in the direct or indirect intervention. Would it be worse if we were not involved and he just got to go like Saddam? Well, that's the question. So, to me, it's, it's a lesser of evils, right? I don't know. See, that's the part. You see, in other words, we said that about Iraq, too, but there's a bunch of people in Iraq who are saying, well, wait a minute, we had it better under Saddam. There was running water, yeah. there was electricity, right. plumbing was working, Baghdad was a thriving center of activity. Right. So, there are a lot of people who say, you claim you are helping us, if this is helping us, we don't want it. Right. Okay, and that's and that's a lot of it. Right. Well, let's take a look back at Libya, who has extensive oil, and people have been saying the controversy. This is all about more U.S. control of oil. Right. But let's put it like this: Believe it or not, people are saying they already are starting to carve up all the resources in Libya. Here's a piece from RT.com, Russia Television. Remember, we use the foreign press because we can. The fight is not over in Tripoli, but the carve-up of Libya's vast oil riches, the biggest in Africa, is already beginning. The Italian foreign minister fired the starting gun, saying Italy's any oil company will play the number one role in the region. And as RT's Laura Emmett reports, the service won't come cheap for the Libyan people. Delivered as a promise, but seen by many as more of a threat. David Cameron says NATO will stay while Libya makes the transition to democracy. As allied forces lend air support to the rebels to take Tripoli, the Stop the War coalition warns Libyans not to expect they're getting something for nothing. The Western powers don't do this without asking for a payback. Why is it that the head of the TNC is running off to Paris uh, to meet uh, with the French president? Well, of course, that is one very, very important issue. It was why the Western powers, Tony Blair uh, and others, struck a deal um, with Gaddafi in the first place. It will be exactly what they're seeking uh, to continue um, with the the TNC, to further exploit those, uh, those oil riches. The British government makes no secret of the fact that its motives in supporting the rebels aren't entirely altruistic. Last year alone, the UK exported around $40 billion of goods and services to North Africa and the Middle East. 
but it's black gold that's the key. Libya has the largest oil reserves in Africa. When mm. Western powers look at the region, they, they talk about humanitarianism or democracy, but they think about oil. Greg Muttit says it's impossible not to draw a comparison with Iraq. He's written a book about the aftermath of the Iraq invasion, in which he maintains Western powers imposed a democracy which played on sectarian divisions. That ensured years of tribal struggle, but also meant the Allies retained control of the oil supply. While the UK government insists lessons have been learnt from Iraq, Western oil firms move in to Libya. Even before the fate of Tripoli is sealed, the great oil grab is already beginning. BP has a contentious oil and gas exploration contract in Libya, which the UK government will be anxious for it to resume. Italian oil giant ENI is the first to send staff back to Libya, and its shares rose on the news. French Total and Austria's OMV also did well, as investors hoped they'd soon be able to resume production in Libya. But at what price to the Libyan people. The great fear is that just as they did in Iraq, they'll create a democracy which serves British interests or the West's interests or oil companies' interests and does nothing for the people of Libya. Laura Emmett. Oh. And that's what I'm saying. Here's what's so funny. You put in a puppet government and then the puppet government gives you extra powers. Just like we have in Afghanistan, right? right. They're talking about the government there we might be there longer True. because the puppet government is giving us permission right. to stay. I'm going like, well, like, we put them in there. We go, you better give us permission. That's like your parents saying, is it okay for me to check your room? <laughs> that's cold, man. What, what are you going to say? No? <laughs> no. Like, right. Well, so you, you, that's the whole thing with this. They you know, go like, uh, they put in, you know what, Vic? They put in a demo, quote unquote democratic yeah. government. This is my part. Because the powers that be have already proven that they can control a quote unquote democratic government, giving you the illusion of power right. where you actually have none, right. where they control all the money stuff, and it basically keeps you worker bees running to and from the work. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think the part here is that we're all so, such outside what we call the sphere. There, you know, it's like the universe. You have the galaxy, you know, you have your solar system, you have your planets, and you have Earth, you have the oceans, you have your land, you have Compton, Lemur Park, and the Bronx. You, won't, you really only know what's going on in your neighborhood. We're not part of it. And I, I, I truly believe this from a distance, that if we just let them, and it's not, I, I don't know if it's our right to do that, but if they say it's not about let, just let them be who they are with nothing involved, there is something that's telling me it will be far worse. And it's just that's just my opinion from a distance. That's all. I I'm not sure. I'm not sure if our intervention staves off something far worse, or are we creating something well, far that, worse? Well, that that is I'm the question. Sure. Well, here's another piece that looks at some of the same things. Once again, the focus is on oil. Well, news of the rebel advance into Tripoli was greeted warmly by investors around the world, sparking an immediate drop in oil prices. And analysts say now <laughs> the most important question is just how much stability this new government will bring. Well, R.T. Sarah Firth has the latest for us. Uh, Sarah, joining us there in Italy. So what, what's the rebel takeover of Tripoli done to the price of oil? Tell us more on that. Well, what we've seen uh, really is a knee-jerk reaction uh, in the oil markets to the events uh, in Tripoli. Uh, we've seen the oil prices, as you say, dropping almost $3. Investors thinking uh, that there are some hopes that oil production could resume uh, shortly. Now, Italy's foreign minister has confirmed uh, that the Italian oil company Eni has sent workers back into Libya. They've led the way, really, uh, in sending their workers back there. Uh, immediately, we saw the stock prices rise. Again, as we're saying, on the hope that they'll be able to re-establish uh, output from uh, Libya. Now, uh, what we've seen is the other big oil companies, such as uh, BP, have actually uh, sat on the fence at the moment. They're waiting to see uh, exactly how this plays out uh, and what's going to happen over the coming days and weeks. Uh, analysts saying that any in to uh, total companies, uh, such as any in total, could be the major winners in post-war Libya. Uh, they were the companies, uh, they were the countries uh, that showed the most support for the rebel forces during this time. Uh, and so they very much thought that they could benefit now uh, with the current situation. Well, you mentioned any, but presumably many others have got their eye on uh, Libya's oil. Um, any thoughts about the future concerning uh, other contenders? Absolutely. What we've heard from the uh, information manager of the Libyan rebel oil firm, 
uh, is that they've said they don't have any problems uh, with Western countries, Western companies, uh, Italy, uh, France, the UK, they're okay, but they could have uh, political issues with countries uh, like Brazil, China and Russia. Uh, now, if that's to be the case, uh, then that could certainly be a major setback for those countries. You could see the loss of billions of dollars worth of oil contracts. Um, I was speaking to one of the editors today of a, a very large newspaper here in Italy, and he's been following the situation very closely, uh, and how he described this was uh, like a chess game now uh, between the oil companies, between the foreign countries on the ground there. It's still an extremely confusing time uh, in, in Libya, what's happening in Tripoli now. Uh, there is still a lot uh, left to uh, sort out. And, and so certainly by no means is this game over at the moment, but uh, that does spell the potential problems for those countries that that Libyan rebel oil firm had pointed out. But uh, as we said, hopes amongst the oil market that there will be output and oil production restored at some point in the near future in Libya. You know what, and that's one of the things, it's so amazing to me how the U.S. press is always so willing to discuss the oil money. It's like Americans don't mind how it looks. You, you even hear the average Americans on the streets talk sometimes. It's amazing. But let me tell you something I read, Vic, it's been almost 10 years since I read a study. Right. They said that the U.S. population was more than willing to fight a war just to have cheaper gas. Yeah, yeah, that's... And that's, as long as they didn't have to see casualties. Which, right. So if you could do a war... In other words, many Americans support America being a bully. If they don't have to see the casualties... Right. That's the other thing they said. They don't want... Which is... Now, that's why today they don't allow you to see the people coming home dead. Right. Because the study showed... Right. That if you saw the casualties, it turned you against the war. So now, even if relatives requested, you can't show the dead. Right. Okay, but these are all things that are designed to get your approval. Let's face it, it's a sad state of affairs. Right. When a survey showed that our country, our citizens, would be willing to fight a war and kill people just to have cheaper gas. But you have to ask, what was this, <laughs> uh, our country's foundation, you know, discovered on versus and built on? There's two different things here. It's one, when you discover a country... And, you go in versus you develop and you have its constitutions, its, its rights, its civil rights and everything. I asked you a question the other day and I said, how do you feel about the countries that are headed by, you know, folks like in Norway and Sweden? <laughs> OK, I said, now, you believe those are countries that are conquering countries, ones who sit back and say we dictate what we call covert intervention to, to continue to satisfy our general Certainly population. Certainly doesn't appear to be, right? Yeah, I'm just it's saying. It's interesting that to, to watch China, who has the growing economy, right? because while the U.S. makes up 42% of military spending worldwide, China is number two with just 7%. Right. So they're putting all that other money into what? Their country. Right. Building their country. But they go, we just got just enough nuclear weapons that you can't mess with us. Right. Bring your ass over here right. and we will bury you. Right. See, no, so, no, that, no. so what the, the handwriting on the wall, unfortunately, is that's why everybody wants nuclear weapons. To keep the U.S. bullies right. from doing what they have to do. Now, I'm going to say something. Not to say that it gives them a pass or an excuse for China. But China's rate of the dollar as it pays for its manufacturing and development costs from its labor force is so far cheaper that you can probably take that money, the third of it, and probably multiply it versus the dollar investment we spend on it. So it may be a little bit closer. Right. And, and people say, well, that's China. Well, I, like I said, we indict all governments. Some are worse than others. Some do stuff in the dirt. Remember, modern Americans who so much criticize China are the same ones who would fight a war to have cheaper gas. Okay, ain't no offense. So please don't. We can't have some folks lecture us right. on the morality. Well, I'll tell you what. How much do you pay for security to prevent somebody from coming in your sphere of influence? That's called your lifestyle and living. It's not from the strangers way over on the other side of the earth. It's really in your local area. So you spend more money here, right, right. to protect yourself. To me, I look at it the same way. Say, if you just let them run rampant, let the people who are the people who inf uh, uh, probably impact your lifestyle, your local neighborhood sphere of influence that comes from blocks, maybe not even miles. So you end up spending more money against your own, right? Yeah, you just right. <laughs> so it's just one of those things where I say, well, would you pay for more security? And have the goods and services so you can afford paying for it. And he says, you know, security over here costs so much money. Well, I want to pay for some services that's somewhere else that's like 10 times cheaper. 
That means I have to deal with another country because it's import export. So now I have this relationship that's ongoing. NAFTA. No, I'm just gonna let me stop. NAFTA. <laughs> I'm just saying. I just say it's so, all those it's wonderful so, <laughs> financial <laughs> programs that you know Johnson knew who wrote that right. former Reagan advisor. Went right through Clinton. I said, the money is the same. Right. The money is the same, is the same. It is. Is the same. I mean, I... All right, tune in tomorrow, you guys. Tomorrow will be Conspiracy Wednesday. We're going to be talking about these same type of subjects because on Conspiracy Wednesday. Some of the things we're going to talk about is the Somalia update, starvation and chaos that continues. You're not hearing about it. Starvation in the Horn of Africa. Come on, people. All over yeah. Africa. We got to remind you. Yeah. Tomorrow we're also going to be talking about America's response to the riots in London. How are we being affected? Right. And also, you know, the, the British government has had uh, American consultants come over. Right. Chief Bratton, to be specific, from L.A., oh, former Bratton. Chief Bratton, right. over there to talk about how to deal with the London riots. And a lot of the, the Britishers are, don't like that. Um, they don't want why. to be associated with us. Yes. I know. We'll also have tomorrow some footage of the UK rioters actually shooting at the police. This this footage was just released, so we'll have some of that tomorrow. They have a, a strong tolerance, the police force over there. And well, I don't know. You, you don't think so? You know, you have to, to me, I always say, if you ever think of how wonderful and polite some folks are, you have to ask the folks whose countries they invaded and conquered. I, I, I know. <laughs> then they I know. Are, I'm just I, saying. They usually course. have a different, they say they were very polite, but right. very brutal. They killed a lot of folks. Didn't the uh, British have a long standing <laughs> right, right. Uh, policy of not carrying guns? The police. The police. The police. I mean. They had unarmed police. Yeah. But they could call the armed folks in a minute. Right. But they, they get, come. Second level. And they come and kick ass because they too shoot folks. But you get, but, but, but let me just give you the, the size, size up on them. You gives you more time to have a second choice to get away from them well, versus L.A. or anywhere else. Certainly, you know, you know, in certain societies where you don't have the same kinds of reactions from folks, just like in Japan, right. where they don't have the... It's not like here in the U.S. where people act up and cuss out the police right. and riot after a Laker game. Right. Even though the Chinese have some issues themselves, as we learned recently, so it's just where you look at. Just, just have to look over the different real estate areas. Because they sure did kick the get kicked the U.S. team, the, you, the Georgetown in the ass, and they had a big fight and between Giants and just. And that team just lost to Duke, so everything's back to wonderful. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about the fact that the Chinese, they had a big basketball tournament going over there, and there was a huge fight between the Chinese team and Georgetown. Right. I mean, huge fight, you guys. Yeah, throwing. So, all right. Let's get to the other subject. It's, you know, this whole thing we did a piece on, whether it's okay to criticize the president. Well, it's gone a little bit further as Steve Harvey ups the ante by actually saying that anyone who criticized the president, he actually considers them to be stupid. He says, also called, refers to people as Uncle Toms. Right. M making no complaints himself, he spends most of the broadcast making excuses for the president. Right. But let's hear yeah. at least a piece. I'm not going to play all of it because it's 11 minutes and 12 seconds, but I got to play enough of it so you can see what the controversy is. Mm. Take a listen as Steve Harvey calls out Tavis Smiley and Cornell West. Have you seen Here's a leprechaun? An and, and this is what I want to base the uh, bone blast on. Check this okay. out. Right. Hey, morning, crew, because you are not as deep into politics as I am. <laughs> I think that there is something that you need to know. Some He's members deep. of the Republican Party are not the only ones wanting President Obama to fail. Tavis Smiley and Cornell West are doing a so-called poverty bus tour under the guise of highlighting that issue. Because we all know poverty did not exist before January 20th, 2009. However, <laughs> if you check their records, you will find that they have done a lot of poverty pimping through book sales, TV appearances, speaking fees, and promoting the woe is me mindset among the disenfranchised and discouraged. This has been their hustle for a long time, and now President Obama has threatened that with his message of hope and self-empowerment. Just think of what would happen if more people made the effort to tap into their God-given abilities. These jokers would be out of business. Their plan is to discourage a large voting block of the president's base so that their lucrative hustle will once again be secure. Just thought you might want to inform your listeners. Obama Biden Okay, I got to stop it. Already, I had to stop it. Already, this man is a fountain of misinformation. He's a fountain of misinformation. And I'm just going to call I'm insulted for them. I'll call you straight out a liar, Steve. Into politics, you have your facts so backwards, they're up your ass. 
I'm frankly insulted. You know, any black person who insinuates that you should support the president solely because it's black, if any black person who insinuates that it is unloyal to be critical is an absolute fool, I'm a child of the 60s. Any person, any elected official in any position should always be held to the highest levels of criticism, of, yeah. of watch, okay? Yeah. Any of them. Black, white, any of them. And to suggest otherwise, I wonder who the Uncle Tom is. I don't even use those terms. Everybody frags the revolution in different ways. The point being, the kind of things he's saying... He's insinuating that Tavis Smiley's efforts to do something about poverty in this country is for only for self-serving reasons, and Cornell West too. These are people. No offense, Steve. I know. I know this Steve, who's been active way longer than your sorry ass. <laughs> okay, who has what to claim to fame? Amazing. See, Tavis and Cornell West have too much, too much class to come out and criticize you i'm sorry i have my classless side and you're a son of a bitch and an idiot okay <laughs> so now i will say this everybody go listen to this broadcast absolutely insulting absolutely this is jones from charleston well miss jones that's our 30 second phone blast what do you think of this move by tavis smiley and cornell west what are your views have you been keeping up with these two gentlemen what are your thoughts i'm really surprised man to be honest with you because what you know i, I was a huge fan of cornell west i'm sure oh, you really? appreciate yeah. it i'm really man brilliant really brother. Love yeah. I'm, not, I'm not surprised at tavis at all I'm, uh, <laughs> tavis i saw i see him coming a mile away because he's been tavis doing his smiley's for anger started when he was having a town hall meeting. Yeah. President Obama was supposed to come. He couldn't come because of the campaign trail and he sent Miss Obama. Right. This he is... has held that grudge ever since. And and then um Professor West was upset because he wasn't invited to the inauguration as we understand it. Is that correct? Man, to the presidential I was, inauguration. Oh, hey, hey, the, How I ridiculous. Yeah. But are you upset? Yeah, for what? <laughs> Do you have a poverty bus hey, tour? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> have you ever been invited to the damn inauguration? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so did, this Bush anger... add, did Bush send for you? By the way, <laughs> both you? Did of them have send for you? always denied this. you mad because <laughs> President Obama, who don't fill out the guest list, ain't got time to tend to that. That's Do right. you know how many people you wanted to be time. at yeah, the inauguration? The money, mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is first... about not saying thank you. But they're mad at the president for not saying thank you. Well, we don't business? really. It's it's very petty. That's what it's about. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's not even what any of this is about. The disguise of it all. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. not doing for Black America what he uh -huh. should be doing. But let me help everybody to something right here and understand this. And this is in layman terms. You are so wrong when you make that statement. But he is the president of the United States. He is not the president of the hood. Of black people. Now, that's the part I actually agree on. However, you know, because you don't expect him to do things. You can't. He's not going to get out there. I'm going to help black folks. But, hey, if you help unemployment, if you help get rid of unemployment, if you help stabilize U.S. economy, economy you end up helping black folks. OK, the whole point is that you don't have to do it that way. My point is I'm critical of what he's doing to help all Americans, okay, financially. But so this is the ongoing controversy. Go on YouTube, you all. Search the links out and get more on this controversy again with Steve Harvey. Here's a little more. I, I understand that. But now, now that Hillary Clinton is not your candidate, the anti-Barack Obama movement what sickens me is you don't have Obama. any real basis behind your dislike for this man. Six hundred eight sixty eight you, you, billion. You're not basing it on anything. <laughs> you all, please look at the facts of what this man's platform was about and see if you don't fit into the platform. No. How can he raise a flag for black people and be the president of the United States? Yeah. $778 billion guaranteed to the same health companies that I wanted to go out of business. Mm -hmm. No opening up of the contract so that you can have some competitiveness to get poor folks and all of you the health care you need at a competitive rate. When you give any industry $78 billion in guaranteed contracts, isn't that like funding them for life? 
I, I, That's I, I Blue Cross, I Blue Shield, all of them. I don't see any different with past presidents. I, I, there I, is I, none. I don't, I don't see this platform as it relates to the conversations they're having to, to have this distinct difference between past presidents. So for me, I think I always think things is spin. So I think this is spin. I go, is this, if I'm measuring Obama, and I'm going, you're doing something unlike any other president, then I have a conversation. But right now, I can go back and look at all the history and say, guess what? Relative to spending dollars, each president said, we are keeping our percentage between 33 and 35 percent for the military. That's always progressive. Hey, like I said, to me, my thing was just that it was no change. This, right. Is this, for me, you guys, is actually no different than the, than the discussions I had about Bill Clinton. Yeah. Who many of us hey. embraced. You know, I, got, I didn't want to vote. Uh, you know, for him either. But I didn't want to go, because I'm an independent. I'm not a, right. But I, you know, my mom was bugging me. I love you, mom. Oh, you know, you go, a lot of Republicans to win. I, that's a lot of pressure to put on my vote, mom. Because <laughs> I'm an independent. Okay? I'm an indie. I'm not a member. I'm proud to say I'm a member of neither party. You know, Long time uh, right. non-member of either right. party. Okay? Yeah, it's a difference. Let's say that there are people who are outside the political framework and structure and if you're inside you can have a lot of opinions and conversation but to play in the field of politics you know everything <laughs> changes everything changes and i'm saying there's a reason why people cooperate and people don't well and let me say this as a final thing we have got to and i said this even back we have got to let go of this uncle tom crap right. everybody black doesn't promote the welfare of black folks or even in the world in the same way you have no right you have no right whatsoever, Steve Harvey, to sit there and use those kinds of terms in judgment for people who fight this their whole life in ways you never have. Right. And use the terms Uncle Tom. We have the hip hop Republican. I don't agree with Shirley Who's Are. But she gets a voice. And I but I don't turn around and, and call them Uncle Tom. These are right. black folks who care about black people. What? That some of them choose to be Republican. I may disagree. I may feel they're politically misguided. Right. You, you don't do that. They're trying to better the people. That's why we embrace here at Pack Stereo the political vo viewpoints of all black people. That's why we'll show you a variety of viewpoints. Even though myself, you know I'm your radical resident leftist. Okay? I'm just radical. Yeah, I don't know. I'm radical about sports. I'm gonna stay away from him. He's over there and that he's over there. He wants to be the next vice president oh, of Lamer Park. <laughs> Take out the damn trash. <laughs> Take a listen to this now. I'm gonna show you a piece. There's all over the internet. It's not just me. You guys should see. If you go on YouTube and search those videos, you ought to see the responses coming in. Oh, he's catching hell. Oh, yeah. He's catching hell for oh, yeah. a bunch of black people because a lot of right. us who are politically active have been quiet because we've been trying to give the president a break. That's why so many of your black community, your, your leftists, your liberals, the active political people, they've been trying to give the president a break, caught up in sort of this mishmash of, of wanting to see him do well, caring to see him do well, right. and then having to deal with the reality. So right. now that things have you know, grown on and the president's attempting to raise a billion dollars for his re-election, right. well, they're coming out the woodwork. Well, of course. And they do not appreciate Steve Harvey. So, <laughs> so the timing of the year before election all this coming up, I, I said all, all along, I said, I wonder, aren't you supposed to be consistent in your opinions and your philosophy? Why does it always happen right pre-election? I said, so everybody wastes their time. I always it's say, spin do it right. That's why I keep saying, I don't mind spin. But I have to say this, Mark. This is a part where I say you can't change the flavor of the culture. Because they say, we know how to get you riled up. We know how to get you. And... Steve is in his spin, and I'm going, that's good. Now, what's he the wants the more radio listeners. Well, I just, and I think he you wants know, to go beyond like radio. I, said, I think he you wants can take Negroes out of the country. <laughs> 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 but you can't take the country out of. <laughs> Here's some other opinions. Damn, girl. 187-300-7645 to get into the radio program. Now, I've said a lot of things, okay, about Tavis Smiley, and I've said a lot of things about Cornell West, all right? But I have never, ever, ever called them Uncle Toms, all right? <laughs> I, I haven't done that. And that's a little bit above and beyond. I, I'm, I'm not even sure that's true. But Steve Harvey, all right, Steve, Mr. I Have No Hair Harvey. <laughs> You're wrong, man. 
Steve, Mr. Relationship Expert. Right. I don't know how, given, didn't his wife leave him? He was cheating. <laughs> how in the hell is this guy a relationship expert? <laughs> Has the audacity. I'm not just saying this because I just took a picture with Cornell West last week. Trust me, because people said, how did you have the audacity to go take a picture with Cornell West? Look, I wanted to have Cornell West on the show to talk about what I've assailed him about, about not doing his due diligence and being honest about his standing with Obama from the get-go. Because what Cornell West said in his comments when he was speaking about the president and casting dispersions on the presidency and on the president, he said that he had hoped for a better scenario and outcome even though Barack Obama gave him every hint that he was going to be the guy that he turned out to be, be the president they turned out to be, and not a president that was overly concerned about the poor. Now Cornell West is dealing with those issues. I, think, I, I no agree with that. Taking a picture with Cornell West. Other than that, I actually like Cornell West. I, I this is the really second like time him. I've actually met him. So I don't see a contradiction. I don't have a problem. I have a picture with Al Sharpton. We don't well, get along on every single issue. All right, Al. Hell, we, we're at least cordial. We might not be after I left that message on his <laughs> phone about his hair. <laughs> but, it's I mean, looking look, better. You know, we all have disagreements. But I have never, ever called Cornell West one of the most brightest intellectual forces in America. Forget the black community. I'm talking about America, period. This guy's bright. Why would I ever call him an Uncle Tom? Well, I didn't call him an Uncle Tom, but I can tell you who did. Let's want to set this up because these, these clips are fairly lengthy. Steve Harvey receives a letter, supposedly, from a listener. He's here's an e email, and, and this is what I want to base Well, that's the, the part we got. It was always going to stop it right there. Cause we got, it's a time issue, too. Listen, you guys, we're going to continue this issue. I got to hear from that. It's the whole thing. Are we supposed to criticize the president? I'm a child of the 60s, okay? And therefore, I was raised with the premise that we would be critical of anyone in elective office, and especially watchful of, of the black ones. And I have not changed at all. Not at all on that. No, I don't. And so I think that's what you're supposed to do. Now, I don't know where Steve was during the 60s, probably picking some cotton. Oh, <laughs> but, okay. man. Okay. He obviously <laughs> wasn't in school. <laughs> okay. So he obviously didn't learn those things because there should be and should always continue to be a, a distrust of government. Right. You need to watch government like a hawk. All governments, all government people all the time, 24 hours, overtime, all the time, period. I don't care if it's full of black folks, okay? Right. Anyone who suggests to you that you should not watch or just should go along for campaign because there's a black person in charge is just an idiot, okay? And really, often a pawn. Well, he's doing a good job for somebody, right? Yeah, he's doing a good job. That's, hey, there you go like this. At the end of the day, he says, you know, you guys are getting a lot of listeners, Steve. At the end of the day, the man who pays the check well, we'll see. is... Really, the, the movement behind the voice, I go, okay. There we go. There you go. All right, everybody, that's the good news. Mm, I hope so. The bad news. I don't know. Can you hear it? <laughs> Come on, write us, let us know. How do you feel about this? Black on black attack. Now we're going we gonna to fight amongst each other over should we support the president. Black on black. Mm. Dun, 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 dun.